Hey everybody, so good to see you. Good to be back with you. Another Saturday night at the well, your favorite place to be. Um, so just a reminder that you guys can always join us, downtown Clayton, on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock for hashtag Outdoor Sundays. And it's awesome and it's so much fun being with everybody. If you want to join us, remember to bring a um, camping chair or a beanbag. I saw a couple beanbags last weekend. Made me very happy, very cozy. Um, but bring something to sit on, bring a chair, bring something comfy, bring uh, a mask to wear, bring your Bible, your Bible. And uh, don't forget to register online. Got to do it every week. I mean, you can register you there, but it just holds you up and keeps you from getting your Jesus even faster. So go to our website or use the app. It's on the calendar under featured events. Um, sign on, grab your spot, and we'll see you there. Um, if you're not able to join us in person or you don't feel like it, we uh, still have our Zoom links up. So if you want those, you can contact me. Um, I can get those to you. Um, or you can also use the app. You can look on Facebook. You can. There's lots of ways to connect with us through the week and on Sunday mornings, whenever you want. We're here for you because we love you. You're welcome. Um, okay, so let's recap. This is our final week talking about um, the word abide, what it means to abide in Jesus. Um, we have been looking at the scripture. I think it's in John 15. You should know that by now. John 15, 6, something like that. Who's me? Great me. Let me know how I did. But um, talks about Jesus uses this wonderful imagery to describe um, this relationship between us and him and God the Father. And so he talks about the fact that God is a gardener or a vine dresser in some translations, um, that Jesus himself is the vine and that we as followers of Jesus, as his disciples, um, we are the branches that get grafted onto him and that's where we receive our nourishment and our life source and all these wonderful things and how he wants our relationship with him to be like that. Not like a battery where we feel run down so we come and connect with him and then we leave him and go do what we want. He wants it to be a constant connection with him that we can't do anything without him, that, that we that we desire to be with him so much that every moment of our day is spent connecting with him, that it is spent um, using his perspective and drawing energy from him. Everything that we need, we can find in him because he's the vine and we're the branches. Um, last week, we, we brought up the idea of like, you know, there are some people who who don't want to be don't want to be grafted onto the vine, who don't want to, to have this connection, this relationship with Jesus. Um, and it was kind of I think I likened it to like being at a swimming pool in the summer. Uh, some people don't even go near the water, they're just there to like soak up the sun. Uh, some people are very like especially like little kids, you know, they'll be very timid and they might like dip a toe in or like a hand or they're very scared they don't know what's going to happen when they jump in the water they don't know what it's going to feel like and we can sometimes treat our relationship with Jesus like that we're, we're scared and so we hold back um whereas other people just like go for it like they're, they're just going to cannonball on the deep end and just soak in God's love and they're just going to be surrounded by it and they're going to enjoy it and then they're going to let it change them and so all these things um so I just wanted to bring that imagery back up and see if you spent any time last week um, introspective time figuring out like which which of those are you most of the time um, but so this week we're gonna finish up I, I want to read from John 15 starting at verse 8 so if you have a Bible you have a Bible go ahead and grab it read along uh, John 15 8 says um, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. Live in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and I abide 
in his love. Okay, so let's see, like, what is Jesus saying in these verses? Um, he, I mean, basically is saying that to prove that we're disciples, the proof that we are following him is that we bear much fruit and that we follow God's commandments and we love. Three pretty distinct but very connected, very interconnected um, things. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I, I think I want to make it very clear. Yeah, I do. I do want to make it very clear that, you know, Jesus talks about keeping commandments. And I think it's very easy for us to think about commandments as laws or no fun or things we're required or obligated to do. Um, but I wonder what would happen if we changed our perspective on that? What if instead of thinking of them as these boring or no fun things, we thought of them as, as helpers on our journey toward Jesus? What if we, we use them as tools to help us grow more closely to him? Um, and I, we've got to be, be sure that in keeping commandments, we're not doing it because we think that's going to help us abide in him. We're not, we're not doing that work of keeping the commandments because we think it's going to earn us something. That's not, that's not the case. It's not what I'm doing. I always tell my students, I'm not here to give you like another to-do list. You've got plenty of those, heaven knows. Um, but that keeping, keeping the commandments comes from that place of abiding in Jesus. It comes from that relationship with him, that connectedness to him. We can follow the commandments. We can bear fruit. We can love because we connect to him, because we draw what we need from him, because we allow him to change us from the inside out. You following? You following with me? I'm tracking with me. It's not about do this so that you can be loved. It's not about earn this or check this off your list. Make sure you're doing all of these things so that, no, it's because you have lived in me, because you are connected to me, you can now do this. And um, that gives me a lot of hope because, oh my gosh, when I try to to separate from Jesus or I just try to put all my effort into being perfect or following commandments, I'll, I'll fail every time. I do it on the regular. I fail every time because it's not about... It's not about me. It's not about how much more effort can I put into doing. It is about being. It's about being, tending to that relationship, that connection before trying to go out and do all these other things. I hope that makes uh, sense and I'm not just like rambling. Um, so fruit is the, the external sign of internal nourishment, right? If we think about a tree, not ourselves for a second, we know that a tree is healthy. Let's think of an apple tree because it's what popped in my mind. If we think of an apple tree and it's healthy, it's going to grow a lot of fruit and the fruit is going to be good. It's nice, big red apples and they taste delicious and da 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 da. If the, if the tree is not healthy, and it's not getting enough nourishment, it's not getting enough life-sustaining things, it's not going to produce fruit on those branches. Or the branches will produce fruit, but it won't be great. Like maybe they'll be a little disfigured, or maybe they'll be like small, or maybe they won't taste great. Um, what was my point? Now I just want to eat an apple. Anyway, so, so external fruit, fruit on the outside, fruit that people can see, is a sign that you have an internal nourishment going on. Um, so why does that matter to you? Fruit is not for the branch. Let's go back to that apple tree. Fruit is not for the branch. Um, it's not even necessarily for the gardener. Fruit is for people for things outside of the vine, outside of the branch. So if Jesus is the vine, 
I'm switching back a lot, you guys. You guys are doing so good following me. If Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches that produce the fruit, or that the vine produces the fruit through, the fruit is for someone outside of the vine. Who is that? I'll give you a minute to think about it. Yes, so good. Yeah, I know I heard you for sure. Yeah, it is for people who are not connected to Jesus. It's people who are not followers of Christ. Um, it's it's for them. It's for their benefit. It, it does two things. Okay, fruit brings glory to God because if anything good is happening in our lives, we just point it right back to him. Absolutely. There is nothing wrong bragging on Jesus. We should be doing it all the time. Bragging on yourself, not so in fashion, but bragging on Jesus, absolutely. So fruit brings glory to God and points people his direction. This is my new teaching tool. Just picked it up. Um, and it's for other people to enjoy. Okay. What I, what I want us to see. Yeah, no, no, no. We're going to go back here. So let's go back to our Bibles. Okay. We're going to get, it's a bonus two scriptures today. Go to John 15. It's the same area. Next verse is verse 12. Okay. Starting with verse 12. It says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that someone would lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I, I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide, there's that word, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. The awesome, awesome thing in this scripture that stands out to me anyway, it says, no longer do I call you servants. You are my friends if you do what I command you to do because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing but Jesus has chosen us and appointed us with the task of bearing fruit and loving other people the whole point of bearing fruit is that so other people can reap the benefits of it so that other people can be drawn into a relationship with the vine, with Jesus. And then guess what? They produce more fruit and give that to more people who don't know who Jesus is. Point them to God so that they can be grafted onto the vine and then what? Bear more fruit. It's exactly what it is. And the way people know who we are, that we are followers of Jesus, is that we love them. That we love like Jesus loved, that we love who Jesus loved. And I have to tell you guys something that might be upsetting to some of you. Jesus loves, you ready? Everyone. Jesus loves everyone. He loves everybody and there is nothing that someone could do to remove them from his love. It's in the Bible, look it up. So if we are followers of Jesus, we are called to bear much fruit for the benefit of others, for the glory of God, and we are called to love everyone, which can be difficult. It can be difficult. Yes, I bet you're all thinking about somebody that you don't really like, and we're called to love that person. Sorry. And I want you to see that, like, that love is love defined by God. We can all have some pretty weird definitions or ideas about love, but that love is designed by God or de defined is the word. And I want you to, I, this is an extra challenge. I want you to spend time asking God what that means. What does it mean for me to love everybody? What does it mean for me to love my family, my friends, uh, the people who I might consider my enemies? What does that mean to love them? How can I love them? 
And the great thing is that's you drawing near to him. That's you tending to that connection that you have with the vine. And the more we tend to our connection with Jesus, our relationship with him, the more he works in us and moves us toward maturity in Jesus. We're growing, we're learning, we're changing in him. Uh, The more we are able to follow his commandments and to love other people. I feel like I'm talking in circles, but that might actually be a really good thing today. So I just, as I close, I want you to, to see a couple, couple last things. If the idea of connecting to Jesus constantly, uh, this idea of abiding in him, to be holding him while he holds you, if that is brand new to you, I don't want you to make the mistake of thinking that that's a starting point. I'll start here by abiding and then I'll move on to, you know, whatever. Abiding, it is a lifelong process of discipleship. It is a lifelong process of allowing him to change you to look more like him. It's a lifelong process. Sometimes for those hard days, it's an hourly choice. You know what I'm saying? Let's be real here. Um, But it's definitely not a starting point. It's not something that you can, you know, oh, I've started to abide. I've achieved it. I'm going to check it off my list and move on. It is a lifelong journey being connected to him. And it's fantastic. Um, I, I want to challenge you guys as we close to remember all the wonderful things that we've talked about the last few weeks. Um, so, so your challenge, other than what I already gave you, is to, to trust, trust the gardener, to trust God when he prunes you and he shapes you to look more like Jesus, okay? Surrender, surrender to God um, as he as he purifies you from the inside out so that you can bear fruit on the outside for other people to see. And it's not about doing works. The only thing we have to like really actively work on is that connection, that relationship to Jesus. Because the more we tend to that, the more we're going to be able to do the work outside. We're going to bear fruit. We're going to love people. And it's going to be so good. And God's going to be glorified and all things are going to be wonderful. So that's it. That's what I got for you this week. Um, I would love to pray for you guys. Um, You'll be free to go garden or bear some fruit. Tell people about Jesus. Yeah, let's do that. Heavenly Father, I just, every time I want to start by saying we are thankful. We are thankful for your word. That gives us a very clear picture of who you are, who you call us to be, and how we can do these things, Lord. We're we're thankful that you desire to partner with us to love people, that we can move from being a servant to a friend of Jesus because we're moving from consumers to co-producers with you. God, I pray that we would be brave enough to surrender to you, that we would be brave enough to open up and let you do the work of changing us, of purifying us from the inside out. Lord, remove anything in us that is not of you. God, I pray that right now inside each of us would, would be sparked a longing to draw close to you. That through that connection, much fruit would be born and that many people would come to know you and love you and be in a relationship with you. God, you are good. You are good all the time. And we are so thankful for you. Amen. Amen. I hope you guys have an awesome week. Um, I hope I see you tomorrow morning. And if not, I will see you right back here next Saturday night. All right. Bye.